cops asking you to do, to do the decent thing and, and you take offense to it and decide to assault uh, a public servant. The sheriff's office looking into an altercation over face masks between County Judge Nelson Wolf and a customer at a local hardware store. It's been a debate among many during the pandemic to wear a mask or not. What a new study reveals about the effects of wearing a mask and the spread of the coronavirus. A new poll shows Joe Biden with a commanding lead over President Donald Trump. I'm Nadia Romero at the White House. I'll explain how the coronavirus is impacting the campaign trail. Not a whole lot of activity on the radar screen this afternoon, but I do anticipate that to change a bit in the days ahead. We'll talk about that and an update on the African dust coming right up. Next, we take a look at how the pandemic is affecting 4th of July fireworks sales. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, the Bear County Sheriff says Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf was assaulted today by a man upset over the new mask requirements. It happened while the judge was shopping at the Lowe's off of I-10 and Callahan. Garrett Berger is at that store with details. Garrett, what exactly happened in all this? Well, it just seems to be a bit of a coincidence that Judge Nelson Wolf, who was the one who actually ordered the mask requirement last week, which has businesses create a policy requiring employees and customers alike to wear masks when they can't be socially distant. He just happened to be in the checkout area of this Lowe's when another customer decided he didn't like that policy. Now, according to Sheriff Javier Salazar, the other customer was arguing with an employee who had told him to put on a mask. Sheriff says the man became irate and Wolf came over to intervene. This video shows the judge trying to hand what a spokeswoman says is a business card to the other man before the man slaps it down. That's the only contact that is shown in the video BCSO provided us. Now, the spokeswoman said Wolf is uninjured in this encounter. And the sheriff said a loud confrontation followed that, during which the judge got Sheriff Salazar on the phone. The sheriff says he was able to listen in and could tell the man knew exactly who Wolf was, knew exactly what he was being asked to do, and had decided he wasn't going to comply. Right now, COVID is just running rampant in, in, this, in this community, along with, with every other community across this country. We're just asking you to do, to do the decent thing, and, and you take offense to it and decide to assault uh, a public servant. That's, that's just, there, there's no call for that. Assault on a public servant would be a felony charge. Now, this incident obviously captured on video, and Wolf got the man's license plate when he left the store. The sheriff says they do know who this man is. Now, the sheriff said he wouldn't recommend any other employees try to confront customers or get in an argument if they refuse to wear a mask. He says just having the policy posted puts people or puts businesses in compliance with this latest county order. Live at Lowe's, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And I'm sure we'll hear more from the county judge coming up at about 613. Thank you, Garrett. The number of cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, though, continue to be on an upward path. A recent report tracking spikes in major U.S. cities, ranking the San Antonio and New Braunfels area as the third fastest growing area for COVID-19 cases. Just yesterday, Metro Health said the death toll in Bear County had reached 100. The case count up by more than 300 new cases from Monday. The next county update from the mayor and judge, as I said, will be tonight during the news at 6 at around 613. A trustee with Edgewood ISD is in some hot water over a Facebook post. Trustee Diana Serrano is accused of posting this picture. Dina Serrano, excuse me. It shows a man with his head in a noose and two children pulling on the rope. The caption posted says, Happy Father's Day, babe. Look what you helped create, end quote. Serrano is listed as the district's current board vice president. The district's board's president released a statement saying in part, quote, I am extremely disappointed by the poor judgment demonstrated by a member of the Edgewood ISD school board. This does not reflect the Edgewood ISD board of trustees, nor the Edgewood Independent School District, end quote. She has not responded to phone and email requests for comment. Is San Antonio police seeking a person of interest in the October 2018 murder of 20 year old Mia Lutzenberger? They're looking for this man, 24 year old Alexander Joshua Mickelson. These are two different photos of him. The most recent one is on the left. He's about six feet tall, brown hair, 
and brown eyes. Mia Litzenberger was stabbed to death in October 2018 at Border Brook and Leon Creek Greenway North near 410 and Ingram Park Mall. Police say Michelson, the person of interest, has two active warrants for aggravated assault and sexual assault. If you have any information, contact SAPD's homicide unit. The number is there on your screen, 210-207-7635. We are still working to learn the name of a 31-year-old man killed in a head-on crash in West Bear County this morning. It happened at Loop 1604 near Pooh Road. That's north of McDonough. Officials say the driver of a pickup truck veered into oncoming traffic and crashed into the 31-year-old's Honda Civic, killing him. The man who caused the crash taken to the hospital. The crash is under investigation. Rallies, online fundraising, absentee and socially distanced voting on Tuesday, all happening amid the coronavirus pandemic. In an election year unlike one we've seen before, Nadia Romero is live at the White House with a look at how, despite COVID-19, politics are carrying on. Nadia? Well, ECs and Steve, the president does not want to talk about the coronavirus pandemic. Instead, he wants to focus on the economy as we get closer to the election. But the International Monetary Fund says that the global growth will be down 5 percent, and that will be the biggest slump since the Great Depression. President Donald Trump rallied in Phoenix Tuesday night. And with your help, this moment will be a turning point. In American history, the best is yet to come. Thank Before a large crowd of students undeterred by surging coronavirus cases. Unbelievable spirit. I appreciate it. His Democratic opponent, Joe Biden, meanwhile, teaming up with former President Barack Obama online. There's nobody that I trust more to be able to heal this country and get it back on track. Uh, than my dear friend Joe Biden. Together, they raised $11 million from 175,000 donors, Biden's largest haul from a single event yet. This is the United States of America, and there's nothing we cannot do when we do it together. Another potential boon to the former VP's campaign, a double-digit lead over President Trump and a new poll from the New York Times and Siena College. But with the election just over four months away, both candidates will be facing a major hurdle come November, the pandemic. Tuesday's primaries providing a preview of what Election Day may look like. We're in unusual times right now, and, and I think the most American thing you can do these days is actually exercise your sacred privilege to vote. In Kentucky, fewer polling places, but larger venues and more machines help shorten wait times. Several key races in both Kentucky and New York remain undecided as absentee ballots are still being counted with results expected next week. All signs pointing towards a lot of uncertainty come election night. So that same poll by the New York Times Siena College shows that more than 60 percent of Americans disapprove of the president's handling of race relations and the protests following George Floyd's death. The question now is, will that will hold uh, as we get closer to the election or if people will be focused on other topics by then? Live at the White House, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve, back to you. There's still a lot of time before Election Day. Thank you, Nadia. Appreciate it. A reminder, early voting for the July 14th runoff election starts on Monday, June 29th. The election was originally scheduled for late March, but was postponed at the start of the pandemic. There are a total of six races in the Republican primary and 12 races in the Democratic primary. Remember, if you voted in the initial election, you are only allowed to vote in the same party's runoff. Early voting runs June 29th through July 10th. If you're unsure who's on the ballot and need a refresher, our KSAT.com team compiled a list of the runoff races and candidates. We also have sample ballots on the website as well. Just go to KSAT.com slash vote 2020. Election day is July 14th. Hey, right now we're sitting at 89 degrees at the airport in San Antonio. A little bit warmer as you head west of town as usual. We just barely hit the triple digit mark along the border, but 99 currently in Carrizo Springs. As you can see, as we go through the evening, well, conditions, temperatures will gradually drop off. Conditions aren't going to change all that much. A stray shower east of San Antonio, otherwise partly cloudy conditions, 83 degrees by 10 p.m. and by midnight will be about 78 with a calm wind overnight tonight. I'll be back to talk about increasing rain chances for the next few days along with 
the Saharan dust coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Well, right now, a public viewing is being held for fallen BCSO deputy. Excuse me, we're going to go to another story right now. Yeah, we are stronger together. It's one reason why Morgan's Wonderland is working with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center to host a two day blood drive. Today was the first day of the drive and Morgan's Wonderland says thanks to everyone in the community working together, slots were booked up before they could even announce the drive. They hope to collect a total of 140 units of blood from about 70 donors each day. One of the cool things about the drive now is that the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is offering free COVID-19 antibody testing to anybody who donates right now. Morgan's Wonderland is planning to hold two more blood drives in July and August, along with several more in the fall. You can find a way to donate by visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. In order to help businesses stay in line with the new mask order, Bear County distributed one million masks to local business owners this morning. The distribution at the Freeman Coliseum, it did require pre-registration. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf said the mask distribution is an effort to both safely reopen local businesses and to limit community spread of COVID-19. Speaking of masks, to wear a mask or not, it's a, it's a decision that's divided Americans, but a new study suggests face masks have significantly reduced the number of new coronavirus cases. Wearing face masks in public prevented as many as 450,000 new cases of coronavirus, according to a new study. That study, published online in the journal Health Affairs, estimated between 230,000 and 450,000 cases of the virus were prevented in the states that enacted requirements for mask use between April 8th and May 15th. Researchers say wearing face masks in public reduced the daily number of coronavirus cases by as much as 2% in Washington, D.C., and the 15 states that mandated their use compared to the states that did not. The longer the mandates were in place, the higher the reduction in COVID-19 cases. Researchers also looked at 20 states that imposed employee-only mandates but not public mask use and did not find a significant impact on the spread of the coronavirus in those states. The study did have some limitations, including the inability to measure the actual use of face coverings in any community, and researchers were only able to measure confirmed cases of COVID-19 despite evidence that infection rates in some communities were higher. Well, right now, a public viewing is being held for fallen BCSO deputy Timothy De La Fuente. He died back in April after testing positive for COVID-19. Today's service is at Mission Park Funeral Chapel South. A prayer service starts at 7. Anyone who attends is asked to wear a mask. De La Fuente had been with the sheriff's office for 27 years. Funeral arrangements have not been announced. Well, if you're trying to stay home as much as often, avoiding multiple trips to the grocery store, one way of limiting your exposure. Up next, how to best use the foods stocked in your pantry and which foods you might want to pick up the next time you're out. New at 5, the recent cancellation of the annual fireworks show at Woodlawn Lake due to COVID-19 concerns will likely mean big business for area fireworks vendors. Today marks the beginning of a 10-day run, allowing fireworks to be sold legally in Bear County. First day sales have already been brisk and with fewer public shows, vendors predicting that the trend will continue throughout the holiday period. Historically, when we've seen local shows that are canceled in areas where we're selling fireworks, uh, people want to go out and see fireworks. So instead of going to those shows, they come out and they, they buy it and do it themselves. Though sales are legal in Bear County through the 4th of July, the sale and use of fireworks is illegal inside the San Antonio city limits. Remember when going to the grocery store every week or several times a week was routine? With COVID-19 still a threat, now may be a good time to limit those trips to the grocery store. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says you may be able to shop in your own kitchen. Comfort food may appeal while you're cooped up at home, but nutritionists say perhaps now more than ever, it's important to eat healthy. The food you choose to eat right now can support your immune system and boost your energy levels. So making nutritious choices is really important. Health officials still advise we stay home as much as possible. So if you want to minimize trips to the grocery store, you may have plenty to work with already. You can make whole meals that are pretty tasty from the things that you have in your pantry, like canned beans, 
or canned fish, grains, pasta, and then you can supplement with fresh food that you've got in your freezer. For instance, she suggests oatmeal for a hearty breakfast. Add some peanut butter, cinnamon, thawed frozen berries, and a little honey, and you've got a protein-packed bowl. For lunch and dinner, try your hand at homemade soup. Start with sautéed onion and garlic, add fresh or frozen veggies, and low-sodium broth. You can jazz it up with pasta and spices. When you do restock, pick up long-lasting foods. Cottage cheese and ricotta can last two weeks in the fridge, and produce like apples, winter squash, carrots, and cabbage can also last two weeks if you store them in a cool, dry place. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Hello. Hi there. Hi, hey, Adam. Hey. I'm still getting used to the social distancing. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just not my style. To I be know. So far Usually away from... we have like a three shot that includes yeah. all three of us. Now there's only two of us. So <laughs> Usually we yeah. get to chit chat a little and talk. Yeah. It reminds me of my days in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, working at the Fox affiliate there Aww. when it was always poof right yeah. out to you. And, Ooh, hey. <laughs> was it K-Fargo? Anyway. No, it was not. Oh, it was oh. K-V-R-R. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on here. Let's talk about our rain chances, which are improving in the days ahead. I think we're going to have a little more widespread activity as we get into the next couple of days, particularly Friday. That, I think, is our best opportunity. Right now, we still have an upper-level system just outside of Houston, and it's still triggering some showers east of Austin, north of I-10, just outside of our viewing area. And you see these echoes here from Johnson City to Sisterdale to San Antonio, New Braunfels. Again, like yesterday, this is likely just some bugs getting kicked up into the air that the Doppler radar can uh, can detect. Think about it, if it can detect a raindrop and a small raindrop, it can detect bugs, especially the bigger bugs, particularly. All right, a lot of good activity far south, uh, closer to Laredo, Corpus Christi, and down into the valley. Otherwise, around here, we have a lot of sunshine, and I don't anticipate any showers locally for the rest of the evening. Just east of San Antonio, you have that 20% chance, and that's it. Let's talk about the big picture here. You can clearly see that counterclockwise circulation in East Texas, just north of Houston. That's a little upper level disturbance. Brought some good rain yesterday to East Texas, even a few showers to us. And today, no surprise, it's causing more rain. We're just on the back side of this and just barely far enough to remove to not get any good showers from it. However, here's our big hope for Friday. It's this inverted trough, this disturbance over the southern Gulf of Mexico. Some good convection with it right now. You don't see a lot of green around it because it's outside of the Doppler radar range. Okay, keep that in mind. But the satellite imagery looks good with this disturbance. That's going to have a lot of good tropical moisture with it. That's going to migrate northward, and we're expecting it here as we get into Friday to boost our rain chances a bit. So Friday really seems to be our biggest hope and our best odds for some decent rainfall. So tomorrow we'll say some scattered activity by the afternoon. We'll have just a little shift compared to what we had today and some pop-up showers and thunderstorms scattered in nature, those random pop-up ones. And then by Friday, we're expecting it to become a little more widespread and the showers to be a little more numerous. One wild card here is the Saharan air layer, the African dust. You can see it on the satellite imagery very clearly south of Cuba here, parts of the Caribbean really uh, noticing that dust in their sky. And it is getting pushed our way, but as it does move our way, it gets dispersed a little bit and I don't think it's going to be thick enough to really inhibit a lot of those showers and storms from forming, particularly as we get into Friday. We'll have some in the air, but it could make for some of those muddy downpours. Anyway, 89 degrees right now. We just have high thin clouds overhead, traces of that dust high in our sky. 64 degree dew point, so a little muggy out there, but it could be a lot worse. That north wind definitely treated us well today. Stinson's 90, Bulverde, you're 85 degrees. Corpus only at 75. We have some rain cooled air down to the south, and Del Rio did hit the century mark today, right now at 101. Again, not overly humid right now, that's good. So a pleasant evening, mostly clear to partly cloudy, and then tomorrow we'll boost those rain chances to 40%. That's for the afternoon and early evening hours. Then that little jump on Friday to 50%, so a little more numerous in terms of coverage. And then we turn off the tap by... Sunday and especially into Monday as the big blue H parks itself overhead again. Perfect. Thanks so much, Adam. I don't know if everybody realizes what a hotbed San Antonio has been for yes. boxing and still is, Greg. Over the years, and now we've just crowned our fifth world boxing championship in 
Alamo City history. New World Boxing Champ comes from San Antonio, and it happened last night in Las Vegas. I'll tell you who it is. An NBA player testing for COVID-19 begins. Coming up. Says, Congratulations, San Antonio's own Joshua Franco became the latest world boxing champion for the Alamo City. Happened in Las Vegas last night as Franco took on Andrew Maloney for his WBA Super Flyweight title in the scheduled 12 rounder. Franco took over in control in the 10th with a straight right hand, opened up a nasty cut over the left eye of Maloney. Blood poured out until the end of the round, forcing the cut man to work extremely hard. They get him ready for the 11th. In the 11th, Franco scored a knockdown with two vicious lefts, one that snapped Maloney's head back into the ropes. He was forced to take a standing eight count before the fight was allowed to continue. In the end, Franco was awarded unanimous decision to become the fifth world boxing champion from San Antonio. It still hasn't hit me yet. Uh, it's just so real. Uh, I can't believe it. You know, I'm world champion and, you know, I worked so hard for this. I knew the hard work would pay off. I needed that knockdown, but by little I was breaking him down. I could hear him making, making little noise after I would hit him. So I knew little by little I, I, would, I would get to him. All right, as players who are involved in the 22-team restart of the NBA next month have reported back to their teams, we're getting reports of positive COVID-19 tests as part of the return. All players are being tested. According to ESPN, one Western Conference team has four positive tests, while according to Arizona Central, the Phoenix Suns have two positive tests. We also know that Denver center Nikola Jokic has tested positive after returning to Serbia. He must now undergo two negative tests before he can travel back to the United States. There's still time, though, for players who test positive to recover before reporting to the bubble environment created at Disney World in Florida for the resumption of the season next month. Brooks Kepka has withdrawn for the Travelers Championship this week after he, his caddy tested positive for the coronavirus. Kepka's coach, Claude Harmon III, and his caddy, Ricky Elliott, originally tested negative on Monday after arriving at the Travelers Tournament, but they all took another test and learning Graham McDowell's caddy, Ken Comboy, had tested positive. Kepka told Golf Week that Elliott's second test was the only one to come back positive, but the PGA will continue playing. Tyler Zeller has agreed to sign with the San Antonio Spurs for the remainder of the 2019-2020 season. Will be available for the league restart next month. The free agent center last play for the Denver Nuggets, but was cut back in October, was not played this season yet. Zeller will try and help take the place of Marcus Aldridge, who has lost the rest of the season after having surgery on his right shoulder. And coming up tonight on the night, we're going to check in with the Cowboys' Ezekiel Elliott to see how he's recovering from his positive COVID-19 test. All right. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. We'll be right back. I want to take you to a little bit of breaking news right now. Sky 12 over the scene of a shooting on the 3400 block of West Poplar. Yeah, they are looking at that vehicle that you see right there. This is on the city's west side. That's all the information we have is that there are shooting investigation ongoing. We'll continue to follow this and, of course, have the very latest coming up at 6 o'clock.